Thank you for joining the Unity Church of God in Christ Sunday School Review on this Sunday, the 7th of February. We thank God for this day, this new day that he has granted to us individually, collectively, to experience the day, to rejoice, and to be glad in it. We thank God for today, Sunday. February 7th. Praise the Lord. I thank God for life. Hallelujah. I give honor to Pastor Anthony Rogers and First Lady Charlene Rogers, the leaders of the Unity Church of God in Christ. I also thank God for you who have decided, who've taken time, who have chosen to join our Sunday School Review on today. You have made the right choice. You are at the right place to receive a blessing from the Lord. I thank God for our Sunday School Superintendent Deacon Joe Daniels and his companion Sister Annie Daniels and how he collaboratively and collectively works with our Sunday School teachers Deacon Robert Delgado and missionary Rachel Drake to extend the Word of God to every Sunday School student. Praise the Lord. And I thank God for the opportunity on this day, granted to me the privilege and the honor to share today's lesson review with you. The topic of our discussion today, the topic of our review today is called to evangelize. Again, called to evangelize. This being um, our entire focus today, our Bible basis for this discussion is John, the fourth chapter, verses 25 through 42. Again, John, the fourth chapter, verses 25 through 42. Our Bible truth for today, after meeting Jesus, the Samaritan woman becomes an evangelist. Again, after meeting Jesus, the Samaritan woman becomes an evangelist. Our memory verse that coincides with our topic of discussion called to evangelize, and many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman, which testified, he told me all that I ever did. Praise God. Our memory verse is found in John 4th chapter, 39th verse. The King James Version is what we have shared today. Our lesson aim. By the end of this lesson, we will analyze the barriers Jesus crossed in speaking with the Samaritan woman. Since the wonder the Samaritan woman felt in her meeting with Jesus and share with others the transforming power of God that works in their lives. Our words today that will help us achieve our lesson aim, our words that we should focus, our words that we should clarify meeting so they can help us successfully meet our lesson aim, analyze, sense, and share. The word analyze is to examine them methodically and in detail. The constitution or structure of something, especially from an informational perspective. This is good to analyze and to understand for informational purposes so that you can explain and interpret later. The word analyze is not new to us. The explanation or the definition of the word is not new either. We all know the meaning of the word analyze. Since it's a faculty given to us, it's a perception that the body feels an external stimulus, stimulus, excuse me, a feeling, a sense coincides or goes along with the faculties that have been provided. The senses are uh, uh, excuse me, uh, 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 the faculties that have been provided to us, such as sight, smell, 
hearing, taste, and touch. Sensing something coincides with those faculties. Hallelujah. You get the sense or feeling that something is about to happen or something is the case. And then finally to share, a person who publicly supports or recommends a particular cause or policy. Therefore, today, we are going to analyze, research, examine, sense individually, hallelujah, how this message today impacts us and how it impacts us. Then our goal, our mission should be to share that impact with someone else. Our lesson aims always prepare us to do something, to act upon something. And today we're going to research, analyze, sense, and then share. Hallelujah. These are the words that will successfully help us meet our lesson aim for this week. Analyze again, sense, and share. These words are also key in witnessing. These words are also key, hallelujah, in proclaiming the gospel, the good news. These words are key in approaching individuals, be it family, friends, neighbors, or people we do not know. We have to analyze the situation since, hallelujah, if it is appropriate, and then share our message. I'd like to go over a few words as we review today's lesson. The topic of our discussion today, as we do know, is called to evangelize. Just looking up the dictionary meaning of the word evangelize is to convert or seek to convert, to preach the gospel, to earnestly advocate. That is evangelize, to seek and to convert, to preach the good news to, to earnestly advocate but you are seeking individuals to convert them by preaching the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. That is the meaning of evangelize for today's lesson. I'd also like to, because there are differences in our message, there are different approaches. And so we see the word evangelize and what it means I'd also like to review the word minister, minister to. To minister to is to attend to the needs of someone, to take care of the needs of someone. Hallelujah. And then finally, another word to witness. Witness, one that gives evidence specifically one who testifies in or for a cause. The way we act, the way we speak, the way we look, the way we even think should reflect Jesus and his ways. These things, our actions, the way we speak, look, think, are witnesses, <laughs> excuse me, are used as a witness of what Jesus can and will do. Today, the words evangelize, the word minister to, and the word witness have all and will all be reviewed, will all be executed in, hallelujah, our scripture text, in our scripture text for today's lesson. There are many of us who we approach and go out and share the good news of Jesus and we categorize it as all the same. But there is a difference between evangelizing, 
There's a difference between ministering to the needs of someone and there's a difference, hallelujah, in a witness. All of these things collectively work together to build, hallelujah, the believers of God, the believers who walk in the way of Christ. Praise God. Our introduction in today's lesson, a little bit of background. Um, this week, our lesson is focus is in the book of John. We have studied and we know a little bit about the book of John from various or previous lessons. We know the word John means grace. We know the word John means gift or mercy of the Lord. John was called or known as the beloved disciple. John's book, the Gospel of John is a divine record of the pre-existence, the life, the ministry, the death, the resurrection of Jesus, and capturing Jesus as the Son of God, showing Jesus his deity and the fact that he is part of, hallelujah, God's family, the royal priesthood. He is, again, the son of God. John was skillful in his writings to demonstrate Jesus in these various manners. He presented Jesus to us. He authenticated Jesus as the savior of the world. Hallelujah. And that by believing in Jesus, one might have eternal life. This was John's emphasis in his focus in writing his book. The third chapter specifically, our lesson today, let me take a step back, takes place in the fourth chapter, and we will get there momentarily. But I'd like to highlight briefly on the third chapter to bring us up to the point of our discussion today. In the third chapter, Jesus has an encounter with an individual that has a name. The scripture references that his name is Nicodemus. The scripture references that he's a Pharisee. It also outlines the fact that he was a member of the Jewish ruling council. Scripture notes that G Nicodemus came to Jesus by night in discretion, discretion for himself. And Jesus explained to him in that encounter that you must be born again. Hallelujah. This kind of puzzled Nicodemus. But Jesus explained to him and told him, for God so loved the world in that 16th verse of that third chapter, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus explained, hallelujah, what was required to Nicodemus in a way that he had not explained to anyone else. Hallelujah. Again, Jesus in the third chapter has an encounter with a man. This man has a name. This man is on a council. This man is a Pharisee. He is esteemed in his status in society, and this man approaches Jesus by night, but Jesus discusses, talks to him, and reveals something that he has not shared with anyone else. Hallelujah. Our setting today takes place. Jesus is en route back to Galilee, but it was necessary for him to go through Samaria. These events with Nicodemus, as forestated, took place in the third chapter. The events of our lesson today take place in the fourth chapter. This is why it was necessary for me to review some important events that took place in the third chapter. Hallelujah. As forestated, Jesus was en route back to Galilee, but he needed to go through Samaria in order to get to 
his destination in Galilee. He stopped in a town called Sychar. Hallelujah. Our lesson takes place mid fourth chapter toward the end. I'm giving introduction on what takes place at the beginning of the fourth chapter. Hallelujah. As we approach the fourth chapter, we see Jesus back in route. A little redundant, but I needed to give a little bit more background. We see Jesus back en route to Galilee. It was necessary for him to go through Samaria to get to Galilee. In his going through Samaria, he stopped through a town called Sychar. Near a plot of ground, Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Hallelujah. Jacob's well was there at this location. Jesus arrived at the heat of the day around 12 noon. The heat of the day, as the saying goes. <laughs> and he sat down by the well. At that same time, a Samaritan woman also came at the well to draw water. It is noted in our commentary. It is noted in a lot of background commentaries about this scripture about the day that most women drew water from the well in the cool hours of the morning. During this time, they could also socialize, but it was necessary for them to go in the cool hours of the morning, allowing them time to complete their assignments, chores, whatever their jobs or duties were during the day. Hallelujah. So it was unusual for this woman to be at the well at this time of day. Glory. <laughs> it was also unusual or not customary for men to speak to women in public. Praise God. I thank God for using unusual situations and settings to personally speak to us, to personally speak a word of life as he does to this woman on today. Hallelujah. People of God, have you ever been in an uncomfortable or un hallelujah, customary situation where you receive a message of encouragement, a message of hope from the Lord? If so, then you can identify with what happens, with what takes place in the conversation, in the encounter with Jesus and this woman. Glory to God. Jesus asks her to give him a drink or will you give me a drink? The woman knows who she is. <laughs> the woman knows the situation between the Samaritans and the Jews and the history between these two groups and the fact that they do not get along. Hallelujah. She knows it's because of their religious differences. So she questions, you a Jew and I a Samaritan, a woman, and you're asking me for a drink. Again, for there were differences for religious beliefs, but it was known that Jews did not associate with Samaritans in that day and vice versa. Samaritans did not associate with Jews. In their time in that day, it was contamination. It was blasphemy for Jews to even share, to even think about sharing the same ladle for dipping out of the well. So she was questioning how and why Jesus was asking her this when all this was taking place, when this was known, 
the resentment, the dislike between the two groups. Jesus answered her specifically, letting her know if you knew the gift of God, the same gift of God that he shared with Nicodemus, hallelujah, in the third chapter, he was now expanding that gift. He was now explaining to this woman at the well, this woman who should not have been at the well at this time, this woman who because of their differences of who they were, Samaritan and Jew, should not even be speaking to Jesus. Glory. He answered her and said, if you knew the gift of God and who it was asking for the water, you would ask him to give you living water. Jesus explains the difference to her in the water. Hallelujah. The difference from the water in the well versus the living water that he provides. He explains that natural water from this well will certainly render you thirsty again. You will thirst again. However, living water cures that thirst. And not only does it cure the thirst, Jesus goes on and says it develops into a spring of water. Oh, glory to God. Not only does it cure the thirst, it develops into a spring of water, and that spring of water wells up into eternal life. Hallelujah. Jesus met this woman at the well. This woman was just going to the well at an inconspicuous hour of the day or so she thought to get some water. She went to the well at a time where she did not think anyone else was going to be there. She went there because she did not want to encounter the eyes of the people or the murmurs or the gossip associated with who she was. Hallelujah. She went at a time that she felt was appropriate for her because she would be alone. Hallelujah. There are many times when we go to places at an inconspicuous time because we want to be alone and we don't think anybody sees us. But I'm letting you know, people of God, Jesus is right there sitting, waiting to receive you as he was for this woman at the well. The scriptures are there for us, hallelujah, to read and to govern our lives thereby. But the scriptures are there also for us to understand these things happen. These events took place and as they happen then, they happen now. God does care. He sent his son Jesus to show us how much. Glory to God. If you're in a situation where you are thirsty, we hear the term thirsty being used today over and over again when it talks about people who are aggressive in their pursuit of whatever they're looking for. They're thirsty because they're looking and seeking after something that does not satisfy. Hallelujah, but people of God, we have the answer to quench every thirst. It's necessary for us, however, to share what God has given us. I'm still talking about the setting. Got to move quickly. Jesus continues his personal encounter with the woman. This is a personal encounter encounter he is having. Hallelujah. When he tells her of what he can do and the water that he can provide and the difference in his living water versus the natural water that comes from that well, he tells her, urges her to go and tell her husband what she has learned. 
through their exchange, Jesus explains her current situation. He explains the fact that she's had five husbands and the man she is currently living with is not her husband. He was not one of the five. He actually belonged to someone else. Jesus was not accusatory in his statement, but he was only stating the fact of her current situation. He was not judging her situation. He was stating the facts of her current situation. She was not offended, but admitted and confirmed Jesus' truth. She confirmed the truth of her situation. At that very minute, at that very moment, when she confirmed the truth of her situation, hallelujah, she confirmed and accepted the witness. She confirmed and accepted also the message of Jesus. The truth of her reality, the acknowledgement of her, hallelujah, truth, provided the message, hallelujah, that God had given to his son. God had chosen his people, his chosen people. Jesus reveals to this woman in their encounter are those who will worship God in both spirit and in truth, regardless of Jew, regardless of Samaritan, regardless of Gentile. If you worship him in spirit and in truth, hallelujah, he is, he is, he is your God. He is a God of hope. He is a God of peace. He is a God that gives everlasting water, hallelujah, so that you will never thirst again. Jesus provided, hallelujah, greatness to this lady and let her know, hallelujah, you are part of God's chosen people. Again, because you were truthful, you didn't get offended, but you accepted the truth of your reality and the fact that I can give you living water to eliminate you looking into whales, hallelujah, to you eliminate you looking to men, women, and other things as whales to represent, to cure your thirst, hallelujah. At times, we look at other things, hallelujah, to cure our thirst. Jesus is that living water. Will you be truthful with yourself today as the Samaritan woman was? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our lesson today expands the personal discussion of Jesus and the woman at the well. It expands this discussion to include you and I. Hallelujah. Jesus is Israel's long-awaited Messiah. And we will see him reveal this in his conversation with the Samaritan woman. Part one of today's lesson, I am. John 4, verses 25 through 30. Hallelujah. As for stated, Jesus and the woman continue their discussion. She states, she knows that Jesus, excuse me, she states and knows that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. She tells Jesus that he, this Messiah, will tell us all things. Jesus notes to her, I that speak unto thee, am he. Glory to God. Jesus shared a truth with this woman. He shared a truth with her 
that he had not shared with anyone else. Hallelujah. In the third chapter, he shared a truth with Nicodemus, Nicodemus who approached him at night, Nicodemus who was high in society, Nicodemus who was on a council, Nicodemus who was a man but approached him at night. It was acceptable for men to speak to men, hallelujah, during the day. But then we have the fourth chapter of woman of <laughs> no reputation, hallelujah. She was an adulterer and a fornicator is the assumption. Her reputation was low. She was no one in the eyes of others, but Jesus took time to share with her a truth that he had not shared with anyone else. I don't care who you are, woman, man, boy, girl, regardless of your situation, regardless of how low you think you have gone. Hallelujah. Jesus cares for you. Jesus cares so much that he wants to have an encounter with you. Jesus cares so much. Hallelujah, that he took time and sat down and ministered to the need of this woman. He ministered to her need. She was seeking something so much to the point that she was thirsty. Glory to God. She acknowledges and states the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ, and he will tell us all things. <laughs> and Jesus again, as forestated, notes to her, I am thee who speaketh unto thee. I am he. Jesus was the Messiah. I am he. He let her know, I am. We know in the Old Testament, I am that I am. He let her know, I am. There is no doubt. I am he. I am this person who you are speaking about. Hallelujah. At the same time, the disciples approach. The disciples come up. The disciples are not concerned about what was taking place. They're not concerned about what Jesus and the Samaritan woman were discussing. Their primary concern was the fact that Jesus was talking to the woman. <laughs> Jesus was talking to a woman and who the woman was and the fact that it was not customary. It should not be taking place. They were bewildered. They were astonished that Jesus was talking to this woman. Hallelujah. Don't let people of God, the boundaries of man, impact your witness of what Jesus can and has done. The disciples were concerned about all the customs and rules that were being broken rules that were created by man, but rules man expected Jesus to operate in. Rules created by man, but again, man expected Jesus to operate in rules which they created. <laughs> it's amazing. We see, we read, we review, we discuss these Sunday school lessons, but yet we too do the same thing. We create rules. We create regulations. We create boxes and act as if Jesus is to operate within our rules. And when he doesn't, we act as if something strange has happened. We act astonished, just like the disciples. They missed out on a key discussion, hallelujah, about spirit and in truth, because their focus was on the customs and the rules of man. Hallelujah. Again, we're talking about part one. I am, he confirms to the woman, I am 
This is John, the fourth chapter, verses 25 through 30. The Samaritan woman's discussion with Jesus was so impactful. The entry of the disciples provided her with the necessary exit to leave. <laughs> when the disciples came with a bewildered look, it was the exit she needed to leave, to run and tell everyone what Jesus did for her. He told her everything she had ever done. He did not do so in an accusatory manner, but Jesus, as a forestated, ministered to her that day. She came to draw water, but left her pot at the spot. Hallelujah. Because Jesus satisfied her need. She left her pot at the well. Hallelujah. Jesus, the great I am, had satisfied her need with his words of living water. Because her need had been met, she left the pot where it was. Hallelujah. Glory to God. She had been filled, hallelujah, to the brim with the words of Jesus and did no longer thirst. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Can you relate? Can you identify with what she experienced? Do you thirst? Hallelujah. When you met Jesus, when you accepted Jesus, when you received Jesus, did you react the same? Did you put your pot down at the spot? Did you leave your habits or whatever is bothering you? Your hurt, your harm, your pain, did you leave it? Hallelujah. Allow Jesus to satisfy and to fill your thirst today. Part two, quickly, I have the words I have. John, fourth chapter, the verses 31 through 38. During the time in which Jesus was conversating with the woman at the well, as for stated, the disciples came back. They entered, but the disciples had been in town purchasing food. When they returned, they were puzzled again because Jesus was talking to this woman, but they dare not ask him why. They loved Jesus and was concerned that he had not eaten. Encouraging Jesus to eat, Jesus responds to the disciples, letting them know he has meat they know not of. Jesus revealed he was the Messiah to the woman, but not to the disciples. Hallelujah, because their mind was on customs and the rules of man. So he knew he had further work, an additional discussion that needed to take place between him and the disciples. Personal discussion similar to that that he had with Nicodemus, similar to that that he had with the Samaritan woman. Hallelujah. Sometimes those who are closest miss what God is saying because they expect him to say it in a way that follows within rules and guidelines that we develop. Hallelujah. Let us look as Jesus explains to his disciples. Let us open our eyes because the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few because our eyes are at times fixated on other things that have nothing to do with the work that God has called us to do. Hallelujah. God is doing a new thing today, and he's using anyone who is willing to worship him in spirit and in truth, regardless of who you are, regardless of what color you are, regardless if you're male or female, God is using his chosen people who worship him in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. The disciples, yet in a state of confusion, are looking around to see if, any, if there's any evidence of someone bringing Jesus food because he's referenced the fact that he's eating of another meat or another food. 
Hallelujah. Jesus shares intimately with his disciples that the food he is speaking of represents his mission. He is fed by his passion to do the will of his father to seek and to save those who are lost. Again, Jesus is fed by his passion to do the will of his father and to seek and save those who are lost. Hallelujah. Jesus notes, not only is he doing the work, but he must finish the work. Jesus at that time during this discussion, just as he took time to change the focus of the Samaritan woman from the natural water to the spiritual water, he was also taking time to personally help the disciples transition their thoughts from the natural to the spiritual. Hallelujah. Jesus helped them by noting you have four months from plant to harvest. Jesus wanted them to look out with the same eyes, the same vision, the way he saw. The harvest was plentiful. This was a collaborative effort he wanted them to know. The sower and the reaper must work together. Hallelujah. Sowers and reapers work at different times, but their main goal is the harvest. One planteth, one watereth, but it is God who gives the increase. Jesus was hungry to see people saved. Do we have that same hunger? Jesus was willing to forgo the comforts of nourishment to complete the work of him that sent him while it was day. What is your sacrifice? What are you doing to help you, hallelujah, complete the work of him that sent you? Part three, I believe, hallelujah. Part three, I believe. Part three is captured in John, the fourth chapter, verses 39 through 42. Jesus, as we have read, as we have discussed, his encounter with the Samaritan woman changed her life. Jesus' willingness to forego custom, rules, and expectation saved the life of someone who was in need. Jesus' willingness to minister to the Samaritan woman, regardless of the fact that she was a woman, regardless of the fact that it was the heat of the day, regardless of the fact that she had shame in her life, Jesus did not care about her shame. He ministered directly to her on the spot, regardless of who was looking, regardless of what they were saying. Jesus ministered to her. It was not too hot. There was not too much going on. Jesus stopped and Hallelujah, although he's always, he was already there. He took time to minister to her. This woman's reputation was sullied. This woman was a lady of no reputation. When you have no reputation and you're a person of ill repute, glory to God, you are known as someone that messes with other people's Husbands, no one wants to be around you. You have no reputation. So who do you think would want to hear this woman's witness of what Jesus had said to her, of what Jesus told her, of what Jesus shared with her? Hallelujah. Glory to God. This woman was ashamed 
of who she was. She was ashamed of who she had become. People of God, I too can relate. There are times that I have been so overwhelmed in sin, I too was ashamed. Glory to God. But the truth of this woman's testimony, the truth of what she was speaking, the truth of what she was saying, she explained in her witness about her encounter with Jesus that he told her everything she had done. She explained the fact that he counted the five husbands and told her the man she was currently with was not her husband. The people knew her. <laughs> the people in town knew her reputation. They knew what she represented. They knew the truth of her witness. They listened because she was speaking about the truth of who she was. She was ashamed, but Jesus had done something different for her. She, hallelujah, left her pot where it lay because he had given her words that satisfied the thirst that she had, the thirst for life, hallelujah, the thirst that made her do so many unscrupulous things. Her neighbors, her friends, her family knew what she had done. She was known in the community. That was the impact of her witness. The truth that she shared was the power of her witness. And because the individuals that heard her, heard her witness, knew who she was, knew what she was about, knew where she came from, they were able to see the difference. Hallelujah to the point where they themselves wanted to see who or what she was talking about. To the point that they were curious and interested because they too wanted to have a similar conversation. They too wanted to have a similar encounter, but they identified with her truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And after they too encountered Jesus, after they too listened to the words of Jesus, after they too had an ear to hear, after they too saw with their eyes and witnessed what Jesus said, witnessed what Jesus did, they believed for themselves. Hallelujah. The woman evangelized. She went out and witnessed about what Jesus had done. Jesus not only ministered to her need, but when the others came, he ministered to their need as well. Jesus ministered to the needs of the Samaritans in such a great fashion, they asked him to stay for two days. And Jesus stayed there two days, preaching and teaching the Samaritans. Hallelujah. Jesus does make a change. Jesus does make a difference. It is not for you or I to note the importance of someone, regardless of the customs of the day, regardless of what takes place in society right now. We are all equal, male, female, in the eyes of God. God saves each of us equally. God delivers each of us equally. And God uses each of us individually to accomplish his work in the earth. And that is to spread the good news of what he can do, hallelujah, for you and I. You may be like the Samaritan woman today, hallelujah, ashamed of the lessons of life, ashamed of your choices that you have made in life. 
Hallelujah. But Jesus does not care about that. He cares about you who will be truthful and admit and confess your sins. Jesus cares about those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. Praise God. Our life need for today's lesson. There are times the lesson series always outlines the life need. I do not share it weekly, but this Sunday I thought best to share it. Our life need for today's lesson. Some people wonder if they are good enough to give direction to others, to give witness to others. What is the best way to share our witness what is the best way you can share your witness? The woman at the well was considered an outcast. Many of us in our minds think that we are considered outcast as well. Hallelujah. But we see in today's life need. But after meeting Jesus, the woman eagerly became a witness and brought others to Jesus because Jesus satisfied her need. She was no longer ashamed after she had an encounter with Jesus. You don't have to be ashamed, hallelujah. God has given us his spirit and it is not a spirit of fear, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Our lesson for next Sunday, for those who do not have a Sunday school book, we want you to certainly be aware of the scriptures that we are using to research and to tune in with us next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Mary Magdalene, a faithful disciple. Again, our lesson next Sunday will be Sunday, February 14th, lesson 11. And our Bible basis is captured from Luke, the eighth chapter, verses one through three. We're also going to review Mark, the 15th chapter, verse 40, as well as St. John, the 20th chapter, verses 10 through 18. Our prayer for today, Father Jesus went out of his way to minister to the Samaritan woman. What an example that he came to seek and save the lost. Thank you for finding us, for drawing us to you through the testimony and witness of others. Help us, Holy Spirit, to be powerful participants in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Please, people of God, remember today to give. Your giving options are displayed at the bottom of our screen. And please remember to tune in promptly at 11 a.m. for a powerful message from our pastor, Pastor Anthony Rogers. Praise God. We thank you for joining. Be blessed. Join in at 11 a.m. and have an awesome week. Take care. And remember, as Pastor Roger says, wash your hands. Be blessed.